On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown, in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. Esther called Hatach, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend her, and she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. Esther 1, 10 to 11, 4, 5. Eunuchs in God's Word, 3. We only read of eunuchs, men who no longer were men sexually, in palaces of God's earthly people when wicked kings reigned. Some eunuchs threw Queen Jezebel to her death out of a palace window at the direction of Jehu. The army commander who had just been anointed king by God's appointment. We read of eunuchs too when the wicked final kings of Judah reigned. There we learn of Ebed-Melech, a God-fearing, brave, kind eunuch. Heathen kings seem to have had little respect for people as God created them. Romans 1 shows us the dreadful immorality men fell into when they ceased being thankful and giving God glory. Such immorality and disrespect for God and his design for what our sexuality is intended for are increasingly prominent today. Eunuchs are noticeable in the Babylonian Empire and even more so in the Medo-Persian Empire that followed. Twelve eunuchs in the Persian court and the high positions they held are mentioned by the name in the book of Esther and others are referred to. The value God sets upon women and his design for the marriage relationship was totally set aside among the high and mighty. This disorder necessitated having eunuchs to watch over the king's women and prevent them from normal contacts even with male relatives. While some eunuchs grew to positions of great power and influence, whether for good or evil, for men to be made eunuchs was completely contrary to God's thoughts for mankind's blessing. Eugene P. Vedder, Jr.